had to pick who's been the best quarterback for the Browns since they came back in 99, it probably was their first pick in the 99 draft, Tim Couch. In my new book, Browns Blues, I talked to Tim Couch at length about his time in Cleveland, the remarkable thing, and I think fans have seen this. He does the, the Browns uh, preseason games. Tim Couch, for all the beating he took and everything else that happened to him here, he still loves the Browns. He watches them on the NFL package each week, even though he lives in Lexington, Kentucky. He was thrilled when they asked him to be a part of the TV team in the preseason. But I said, Tim, well, what happened to you after 2000 and Two, you know, things started to go back 2003 here. He said, I was totally beaten up. I'm going to read you this quote. It says, I don't know how many concussions I had. I had one or two in high school, a couple more in college. I had a concussion in the Baltimore game. I don't even remember what happened. The last thing I remember, there was a snap going over my head. I'm diving in the end zone to get the ball, and I don't remember a thing after that. That was a game where after he spoke to the media and actually ended up crying, Todd Stewart is a PR guy. I talked to him in there and said that was one of the biggest mistakes he ever made. We didn't know a lot about concussions then, was how you know, you could affect you emotionally. By 2004, he's trying out, the couch is trying out with Green Bay and other teams. He said one day his whole shoulder was inflamed. He said he couldn't keep a, uh, a blanket on. It hurt so much. He, could, he couldn't raise his arm above here. By the time he's 26 years old, Tim Couch probably has the body of a 60 or 70 year old for all the beating he took with the Browns. He never really played a regular season game for any teams after leaving the Browns. And if you look at Couch, and he's one of the first chapters in my book, it's like how the Browns handled him is really foreshadowing of how they handle many other quarterbacks. He wasn't supposed to play right away. But Ty Detmer played the first half of the first game, the expansion team. They were getting drilled by Pittsburgh. Coach Chris Palmer takes him out, puts in Couch. Couch is now playing the rest of the season. And you know, we've seen this over and over. Rookie quarterbacks put in too soon before they're ready. Um, the beatings they took. You know, and to me, the remarkable thing is, I, I have a chapter in here on Brady Quinn. He's another guy who loves the Browns. He had a miserable time with the Browns. I mean, if you really look at Couch's days, yeah, these guys make money, but it's like it was dismal. All the sacks, everything else. You know, the power of the Browns is so strange to those of us on the outside. Like, even a lot of the guys here wish it would work. One of the many of the executives I've interviewed here said, you know, like Phil Savage, I loved being with the Browns. You know, he got fired in the uh, airport in Charlotte on, the, on a cell phone. He loves love the Browns. But to me, the most remarkable thing is Tim Couch's affinity for the Browns. And he said the fans. He goes, the fans, he, he answers some of them on Facebook and Twitter. And he just finds it remarkable. And so do I. I think that's some of the power of the Browns. It really comes from the fan base and how the players, even in the middle of all the losing and all the concussions and the broken bones and the torn ligaments, they felt it too.